<laughs> hey everybody, and welcome to this week's episode of the Long Box Guys. With me as always is some of my very best friends since I was a very little kid. Josh, how you doing and what are you drinking? I'm doing pretty good. I'm going with my light beer of choice, Harpoon Rec League. I have tried so many times to get you a, a, a har, Harpoon Rec League shirt. Yeah, the jacket. They, they, uh, they don't want to give up those jackets, yeah, man. Those are really not. nice. Yeah, they are nice. Uh, for Chris, I offered one guy 100 bucks right now. Like, here's 100 bucks for my buddy. He would love that jacket. He's like, nope. I'm like, oh, man, you must love that jacket. Damn it. LT, how you doing? What are you drinking? I'm doing all right. I'm drinking some R Stone whiskey, and it is delicious. How are you doing, Tom? What are you I'm drinking? doing fine. Thank you for asking. I'm drinking a little bit of a Canadian Club because it was on sale. Yes, that's right. Canadian Club on sale. <laughs> and it's pretty good. I like Canadian Club. It's all right. Mikey, how about you over there? How are you doing and what are you drinking? I'm doing well, and I am drinking some Lawson's Finest Liquid Scrag Mountain Pills. <laughs> it is, I do uh, like the tasty name of that. Yeah. yeah. Scrag Mountain. You know what you find on Scrag Mountain? Predators. Oh, they're everywhere. Speaking of which, are we talking about aliens versus predators today? Because that's what Josh has up. No, horror, 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 comics. Horror, comics. horror comics. Okay. <laughs> Great, because I had something completely different planned. <laughs> I was like, oh man, are we not doing what I thought we were doing? Uh, so today we're talking about horror comics. Um, the horror comics kind of saved comics for a while. Uh, superhero comics became wildly unpopular romance and horror comics kind of filled the void for a long time. And that was like the big sellers for, for quite a long time. Mike, uh, what were those years? Do you remember? It's commonly referred to the atomic age, but when the GIs were returning home after world war two, okay. um, starting in the, uh, late forties, early fifties, superheroes fell out of Vogue, uh, mostly because, the the GIs who like to read those comics, they were trying to deal with issues of their own. They wanted something that was a little more familiar to them. Uh, some of them were attracted to Westerns, but others just loved horror comics. And uh, that's probably from the 50s up until The Seduction of the Innocent came out. And then the comic book Code of Authority kind of killed the momentum they they basically destroyed one of the best horror companies uh was ec comics if anybody gets a chance to read any of those old ec comics they do put out volumes of those all the time those are some classic horror stories and the great thing is a lot of these guys who were writing these stories came from the pulps anyways and yeah, so that- yeah. Yeah. And a lot of those are just so much fun to read. Uh, the easy. And of course, that brings us over to the comic book code of authority, uh, which became a big issue with horror comics because horror comics were always pushing the envelope uh, on what they could do or could not do. And, you know, the comic book code of authority really came in hard after them uh, during uh, that time. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't until the 1970s when they, the comic book. Code of Authority kind of lessened their restrictions, which is why you see a a whole new wave of horror comics coming out of Marvel Comics and DC Comics. Like uh, Western Tales goes and changes its name to Weird Western Tales, where they add the horror element to the the Western stories. And, you know, uh, what was normally a war story all of a sudden is weird war stories where... They're dealing with haunted tanks. And... I was going to mention the haunted tank because that's a crazy, crazy uh, comic book to talk about. And it makes my list. So we'll talk about that in a while, even though I kind of doubt we call that real horror. Uh, yeah. So let's go around the room as always. Uh, we're going to name our top three and then a bunch of honorable mentions. And if someone names your comic book, you have to drink. I know one that we're all going to drink to. There's only one that I think we're all going to agree on. Mikey, you want to go first? Sure, I'll go first. Uh, The first on my list is After Life with Archie. It is the first Archie comic that was uh, just amazing before Riverdale existed, where they rewrote Archie and put him into a modern time. 
the horror comic uh, came along after life with Archie and it is the Riverdale gang. And the whole premise is Jughead dog, hot dog gets run over by fucking Reggie mantle. And he brings <laughs> hot dog to Sabrina and says, please bring back my dog. And Sabrina's aunts are like, don't fucking do that. That is really bad, dark magic. Uh, you cannot get into that. Don't do it at all. And she thinks she knows better. She brings the dog back to life. The dog beats ju- uh, eat, bites Jughead. And Jughead is the prime zombie. His little crown makes him the king of zombies. And he just starts eating people all over the place. And it is a race to survive Riverdale. Uh, great comic. I yeah, wish I remembered great. that when I was th- making my list. Because that is fun. <laughs> yeah. I haven't read that, but it's going on the list. There's nothing scarier than Moose getting, getting infected. <laughs> Who gets Midge? Well, you got to read the comic. I read the comic. I can't remember. <laughs> there were a lot of people like trying to help Midge. And yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I remember that part. Yeah. I can't remember what actually happened to Midge, though. It All right. did not go well for Midge. Uh, <laughs> it did not go well for Midge. It did not go well for Midge. She's one of my favorite characters. I like Midge. Uh, Josh, what do you got for your... Uh... Uh, I'm going with a Joe Hill miniseries called Basket Full of Heads. I remember nice. Basket Full of Heads. I'll yeah. drink to that. Yeah, I just yes. did that a, a few weeks ago. I, for, I didn't put it on my list, but that was a fun one. It's a fun one. Um, I'm trying to avoid my staples here because we've talked about them a lot. So I'm going to I'm going to dodge a couple. Uh, so, good. Yeah, it's a it's a great it's only six issues. I, six. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I was thinking four or six issues. I read it a while ago. And he had released a couple at the same time uh, that were just sort of staccato in there, sort of overlapping that same year that I really enjoyed. But I think I like Basketful of Heads was probably my favorite. It was only a couple years ago, 2019 or 20, probably when it came out. Yeah, he had an imprint from DC Comics called Hill House. And I agree right. with you. Basketful of Heads was the best of the the lot of, of the lot. Yeah. yeah. So I won't spoil it for you, but there's a cursed axe going around. And uh, it's a it's a good story. Yeah. All right, LT, that brings us to you, my friend. What do you got? Uh, I'm going to go with Ice Cream Man, which is an anthology book. Mm. Yeah. Sounds delicious. It's, I remember it that was, one. Uh, yeah, it was a really great uh, horror anthology book. Every single story was totally, completely different. Uh, all of them kind of loosely linked to the Ice Cream Man. And uh, it's just a, a great book by uh, W. Maxwell Prince and Martin Marazzo. Um, fantastic if you like little vignettes. Did they have 32 issues each based on 32 flavors? Because that would have been key. That would have been. That would have been fun. It, it was an ongoing series, Josh. So I don't think they stopped at 32. Uh, they made a mistake. Oh, they added Rocky Road, Rocky, Rocky Road. <laughs> yeah. You can't Rocky just put cherries in everything and give it a new fucking name. Yeah. You can't put Captain Crunch on top and call it a new flavor. Yeah, though that no. is delicious. It is delicious if you like razor blades in your food. I do like razor blades in my food, Captain which brings Crunch. me to mine. Oh. <laughs> Not really, but I do. I, this is what I think we all probably thought of first when we were talking about horror comics, and that's House of Mystery. I really enjoyed House of Mystery. Anybody? Nobody? Yeah, I like. Yeah, that. I'll, I'll drink. Mystery. Yeah, drink. I'll drink that. So. Uh, House of Mystery is uh, an ongoing anthology, um, and uh, so who who was uh, the the first guy to own it was Kane, right? Kane and uh, owns the House of Mystery and the House of Secrets is, is by Abel. Abel. Yeah, so Kane uh, was the the keeper of the House of Mystery for a long time. Now it's actually Constantine, uh, but his brother Abel, so Kane and Abel, the original Kane and Abel, had the House of Mystery and the House of Secrets, and it were these two horror anthologies loosely linked to the house of mystery like let's look at what's happened in the library recently oh this is a good book (laughs) 
I, I knew you were, I thought you were going to take this because it is the closest you can have a comic book to being Elvira introducing a horror movie. And I love those. Mike, you know how much I love those. I would watch Elvira 24-7, 365. Uh, I've watched everything she has on Netflix just a couple of times just because it's dumb and it's fun. Yeah, and actually House of Mystery in the 80s became Elvira's House of Mystery. And she replaced Cain and Abel introducing the stories. And those are terrific. And they're fun and they have these little puns in them. And I really enjoy them. And I think my favorite part of it was there was usually three stories, two or three. I think usually three. And if you didn't like a story, that's fine. Who gives a shite? You got two other good stories in there, right? Yeah. One of the three stories was always really good. And the other ones were always pretty good. So it was and, always enough. Yeah. And those comic books were the breeding ground for DC comics and Marvel comics writers would uh, pretty much you know start off on those horror anthologies writing the short stories till they learned the format and the editors felt they could trust them with a longer format comic and it so, gave them a lot of leeway too yeah so if you talk to any of the guys who started out in the 70s they're probably going to tell you yeah i started out writing horror comics uh, and then I eventually got it onto Superman or Batman or wherever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and they could like do anything. Like if you want to do a western, that's also a horror. You got it. You want to do a Camelot, but it's a horror. You got it. A superhero, even that's a horror comic. You got it. It just gave them a lot of wiggle room, and it, I I thought they were and I and dopey as I am, I like the Cain and Abel like side bit where Cain was always bullying his brother when they'd visit. Or, you know, they'd be telling different stories at the same time sometimes. And it was just fun stuff. And by fun stuff, Kane was always killing Abel. Well, Abel always lived. <laughs> no, Abel would come back to life. Because that was the curse of their immortality. That was, that was part of the curse of their immortality. <laughs> I thought it was fun. It was very Abbott and Costello-ish to me. Yeah, it was. Like, on purpose, yeah. <laughs> uh, Mike, what do you got next? I'm going to stick along the same veins because you mentioned John Constantine. So I'm going with, uh, in the 1980s, DC came out with an adult theme line called Vertigo. And it was Swamp Thing. It was Animal Man, uh, the Doom Patrol, Sandman, and Sandman's Mystery Theater. But for me, Hellblazer was the only one that was truly a horror comic. He dealt with the horrors, uh, the John Constantine, by the way, it's pronounced Constantine, uh, dealt with the horrors uh, that no other DC character was involved with it at the time. He It was way before he got into the mainstream of DC superheroes. Let me read you a list which is basically the who's who of who worked on this comic back in the day, starting with Alan Moore, James Delano, Neil Gaiman, Grant Morrison, Garth Ennis, Pete Milligan, Warren Ellis, Brian Azriello, Mike Carey, Paul Jenkins, and a bunch of other ones. It was, if you get a chance to read any of the old Hellblazers, I know some of you guys have DC Unlimited, that is a great series to read, especially when John Constantine is dying of cancer. Oh, magnificent. And Keanu Reeves just recently said that he's very open to reviving the character in another movie. I enjoyed that movie, much to the chagrin of yeah. other people. I don't know what people complain so much about it for. I love that I movie. I liked it. Yeah, it's the, the, the basic setup. The all I mean, some people were upset that he wasn't blonde and he wasn't chain smoking. That's not essential to the character. Essential to the character is a guy who thinks he knows more than everybody else. And he fucks something up and it ruins people's lives. And he's trying to atone for it ever since. That's the essence of the character. They keep the smoking a pretty sharp point of the plot in the movies. Yeah. And uh, what's his name doing? Uh, the devil at the end oh, so good yeah so good until the swinton he's, he's in the movie although, for like three minutes and it's fantastic one of the best portrayals of true like when he's just teasing him with a cigarette 
John Constantine's trying to light a cigarette, and the devil's just holding the flame just out of his reach, which is so what the fucking devil would do. Like, <laughs> just, God damn you, devil. It's so good. And Tilda Swinton. Tilda Swinton? Yeah, Tilda Swinton. Yeah, Tilda yeah. Swinton as the Archangel Michael, uh, or Gabriel, Gabriel, sorry, was phenomenal. Like, she always looks otherworldly to me. And, like, her with all the hospital strap things on and the wings and this is she just looked phenomenal to me she has the spear of destiny but yeah. unfortunately there was <laughs> one thing in the movie that josh hates almost more than time travel so when he held the lighter up to the fire thing, oh. <laughs> and they all went off <laughs> yes i do hate that you know why it happened Magic. 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 There you go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, great pick. Who's next? Uh, background of me? Yeah, yeah back uh, to you, Josh. Sorry. Uh, well, you mentioned Alan Moore, so I'm going with a Alan Moore and Eddie Campbell book, From Hell. Ooh, uh, nice one. Oh, that's a good one. It's, it's good the one. Whitechapel Murders. It's a great depiction. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of... Uh, of truth in the book as they go through a lot of the circumstances of the murders are the actual circumstances of the white chapel murders. He does, you know, he does do twists and turns and he takes the time to, to make characters in and amongst those. But a lot of the underlying facts of that are, are uh, as they occurred. It's a, uh, yeah, it's kind of a haunting book. It's uh yeah, it's uh, kind of tough to read at a couple spots. So if, uh, if you are uh, if you're interested in the in in Jack the Ripper, it's uh, it's a good look into what happened around that time, and uh, and it's also just an entertaining overlay of a of a troubled person searching out another troubled person. I think the artwork in that just uh, usually with an Alan Moore story, Alan Moore can carry everything, but I think the art complements Alan Moore's work so well just because of the gritty grimy look to it yeah yeah that's just a great book all around you can you can find it compiled in one like you oh, know yeah. three inch thick soft cover at some point that are that are floating around if you want to go check it out i usually that's see good. those at conventions for like uh like three for five kind of bins uh yeah. so yeah. They, they made a lot them. of them so you can they find did. those and they they are worth it what do you think of the movie josh you know, I was trying to harken back to it. I know I've seen it, and it's um, it's what's his name, Johnny, Johnny Depp. De- Johnny Depp. Um, and I can't recall any distinct impression, which means I didn't love it and I didn't hate it. Yeah, right? that's it. It was just okay. I, but I, I can't honestly it. recall much about it. Neither can I really. It was the book, and it was okay. I I recall liking it, but I haven't seen it since I saw it in the movie theater. So, it's yeah, going no on. A strong impression, yeah. Thirty years, yeah, <laughs> probably. Yeah, we are getting uh, old, gentlemen. Yeah, where's the? Uh, have the movie? I don't know. Christina Ritchie. I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah, she was, and she was young. Oh yeah, she was young. Don't say. Like was, that. Wait, was that the one with Christina Ritchie, or was that Sleepy Hollow? That happened? Sleepy Hollow was also Christina Sleepy Ritchie. Hollow. Yeah, I think I'm confusing these movies. Okay. I think she was in both, actually. Yeah, no, it was Heather Graham was in. Oh, Heather, Heather Graham. Graham. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it was 2001. Wow. It was 2001, oh. yeah. We are getting old, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Tick tock, tick tock. LT, what do you got next? Uh, I've got a book that Josh actually turned us on to, Manifest Destiny. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice! I'll drink to that. Oh, I didn't have. I have it on my uh, honorable mentions, but I'll drink. It's one I talk about so much. I wasn't going to talk about it. <laughs> I was wondering if Vader Down and Manifest Destiny were the two you weren't going to go to. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, you know, Manifest Destiny, the story of Lewis and Clark on their journey westward. Uh, that turns horribly, horribly wrong. Uh, they take along a group of soldiers and a group group of. Uh, uh, prisoners that nobody would miss. And there's a reason for that because everybody on that boat is cannon fodder, basically. 
Mm. And it's just a tale of uh, diminishing returns of people that are just picking picked off by monster after monster. And it's just a gripping tale, though. I mean, it's told so well uh, by you know Chris Dingus and uh, or Dingus. I don't know how to pronounce it. And Matthew Roberts. Uh, great, great book, Manifest Destiny. Yeah, that's a really enjoyable one. I like the the weird, crazy monsters too. The giant moss yeah. monsters and the tree monsters, and they put a little Native American lore in there and all kinds of crazy fun stuff. Yeah, they sort yep. of take the premise of the haunted old west and uh, and and notch it back, uh, you know, eighty years and send people off with with muskets out into the wild. And it's just a great premise. Just the idea that if there are magical and supernatural things lurking about in the in the forests of the unexplored world, that Lewis and Clark and would have been tasked to go. You know, someone would have been tasked to go do that, and it was Lewis and, and Clark. Their job the was to. To get rid of all of those things to make the West safe for American expansion. Yeah, I just and to yeah, not only a... to to explore it, but also to make it safe for Western expansion. <laughs> <laughs> so every time they came across one of these creatures, their job was not only to survive, but also to eliminate it. <laughs> Which I found. Uh, Seems like a I big task for you guys, but yeah. Like, yeah. We're only like, two men. You should have said Lewis and Clark and 50 other guys with names. <laughs> well, <they did. laughs> yeah. Not with names, though. Yeah. yeah. Not with names. No, with names. Cannon All butter, right, cannon fine. butter, cannon butter doesn't count. Red shirt, red shirt, red shirt. Fuck them. <laughs> um, I got a very specific one shot comic book as my second. Uh, and that is X Men versus Dracula. Anyone remember this? <laughs> yes. I love that comic book as a kid. I thought that was a great comic book. Um, Fix does nothing. You do not believe in it. <laughs> that's LT. That's my favorite line from it. And Dracula grabs Kitty Pride and Kitty Pride holds up a crucifix. He goes, Jewess, that means nothing to me because you don't believe in it. And then he grabs her by the throat, but her star David starts glowing and it pushes him back. He's like, ah! Like, all right, okay. Score one for the Jewess. All right. It's, it's the X-Men trying to fight off a vampire invasion led by Dracula. And it's just a super fun comic. It really throws together horror elements and superhero elements. And for me, for some odd ass reason, I thought that was a lot of fun. Do you I know, guys all remember it? I know it was pre-Gambit, but if Gambit was there and he was <laughs> Jewish and he was hucking yarmulkes at Dracula, I would have been all in. Oh, my God. That would have been hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that's what I think. It charging up a yamaka sounds like. I think I that actually the sound they could have used was mezuzah, and that would have had the dual mean. Like we could have. <laughs> yeah, I would have gone with a dreidel. Was, hey, hey, they made them out of clay. <laughs> so that, that's I love that one. That was fun. I'm glad you guys all remember that one as fondly as I do because I thought that was a great one. What do you got next, Mike? Next, I'm going to go over to friend of the podcast, John Ostrander, for his seminal run on the Spectre. Uh, so much like all of the other horror anthologies that we had mentioned before, this one kind of has it in there, but it also has a lot of talk about. Catholicism and uh, he he's the one who made the specter the uh, the angel of vengeance for yeah. God and uh, he has because Ostrander had actually studied in a seminary and planned on uh, had thought about becoming a priest he has a Catholic priest in that series too to serve as the juxtaposition of the wrathful vengeance of the specter um it really gives you a good take on horror but also discussing the morality of vengeance at the same time and the artwork by tom mandrake and uh, I, alex ross did a bunch of the covers too you're never going to see prettier covers than i was the gonna specter. say the and I, I can remember the first cover had uh this massive pile of skulls that also glue glow in the dark as a skull uh it was fantastic yeah 
it was great. I, uh, I enjoyed talking to John Ostrander. If you want to go back and listen to some of our back episodes, we actually have an interview with John Ostrander where he talks about the Spectre. Uh, if you get, again, I, I'm biased because I got to talk to the writer of it and I love the dude. So uh, this is definitely one of my top horror comics. What about for you, Josh? What do you got next? Well, I'm um, I'm going with I'm um, going with my big bat here, and I know I talk about it a lot, and I was gonna dodge it, and I just can't. I love Lock and Key. Yeah, I drink. Just can't, yeah, drink. You just can't get past that comic book. I knew one I of you guys was gonna I take thought. it, so that's why I didn't mention it. <laughs> and we we've had whole episodes about it, and honestly, I still uh, I do not have the heart to try to finish the TV show. I just don't have it in me. I know they came out with a second season. Yep. yep. And uh, I do not have the heart to try to uh, finish that series. So, I mean, just a comic with such a brutal opening. And then the problem that the, not the problem, it's the, the beauty and the problem with the comic is they have these upswings into like these really like nice family moments where you think everyone's going to be safe and they do the cradle of love thing. And then they just they just drop again. They just drop the hammer on you again. And again, it's such a it's a roller coaster ride. And if I mean, if anybody ever wanted to read something, a, a horror comic that was just a family tragedy wrapped up into a book and really just ride that roller coaster, go go read Lock and Key. Like if Poltergeist ended with a wood chipper, <laughs> <laughs> a haunted wood chipper, a haunted wood chipper. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a beautiful book. It was very well written the art's fantastic the premise is is uh is exquisite it's really just i mean it's one of my just one of my favorite pieces of uh of literature that's come out in in recent times but it is brutal <laughs> there's no halfway about it what do you got lc what's your next uh hailstone by Raphael scavone and uh uh stringer horn uh it's wow, one of the comicsology uh I don't think I've ever heard Well, that's only because you don't listen to me on the podcast. Sorry. <laughs> Rarely. Yeah, go ahead. It, this is uh, one of the Comixology originals. You can get it on Comixology Unlimited. Uh, it is a story of a, a town in uh, back in Civil War times, I believe. And the town has been basically taken over by by the Union soldiers who are, are staying there for the winter. They've taken over all the supplies. They're kind of rationing things out and uh, they're working on a secret weapon. Nobody knows what it is and people start going missing. And it's a great horror comic. And it's all related to the fort. The fort. It's all related to the military being there. And what? it's all related to the Indians that are right there. And it's, 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 it was a good comic. All right. For my last one, before we get to uh, things, uh, before we get to honorable mentions and all that is going to be uh, uh, kind of a, uh, kind of a big tent one uh, because it's going to be house of shadows, which uh, introduces the character of digger, which brings us into the midnight suns. So I'm saying House of Shadows, but really only because it brings us to all of the Midnight Suns, uh, which compose a, a lot of the darker, weirder superheroes of the Marvel Universe, including Werewolf by Night, uh, Dig, uh, the Grave Digger or Digger, not Grave Digger DC, Grave Digger or Digger Marvel, um, the Needle, uh, uh, Blade at some points, Ghost Rider. The sons of the, the Midnight Suns uh, are kind of a, a Santana and boom, boom, boom uh, Son of Satan. I love all those guys. I love the Son of Satan uh, comic book. I'm one of the few people who did. <laughs> and um, uh, when they all come together in the Midnight Suns, it is like a dark, brooding Avengers. And it's a lot of fun for me. I enjoy any time the Midnight Suns show up, but I enjoy the Midnight Suns more separately. But I couldn't say I loved <laughs> uh, Santanish and Son of Satan and The Needle and Werewolf by Night and all these guys separately. 
So I'm going to put them under the big blanket, put them under the big tarp, and say Midnight Suns, starting with, of course, House of Shadows, which was Marvel's answer to House of Mystery. So basically, Digger, who is the grave digger, would uh, be burying someone alive while telling them a story. And the story would be the main one or two or three stories that were in the House of Shadows for that night. And it would always end with either the head being just above surface and then a car runs over them or something like that. And I really enjoyed those comics. Do you guys like Midnight Suns at all? Do you guys enjoy that? I mean, who doesn't like the psychosensitive metal of of <laughs> Son of Satan's nether trident as it probes the ground? Uh, what's uh-huh. the name of the... Uh, name the metal, at least, if you're going to be a jerk about it. I think it just did. I no, is that did. called nether metal? It's a psychosensitive metal of his nether trident. It has a name, Tommy. It has a name. Okay. I can't remember it either. (laughs) (laughs) But it has a name. (laughs) Uh, I tried to call you and I fucked up. (laughs) Uh, But yeah, I always enjoy that. I I think you enjoy those comic books too, though. You kind of like Son of Satan, right? Damien Hellstrom. Did anybody watch the Hellstrom show? I watched like all of it. All right, nope, out. <laughs> <laughs> I tried I got, to watch that first one. <laughs> yeah, Josh always says he gives it three. I gave it thirty minutes. <laughs> uh, I gave it like six. I tried so hard. Six minutes? No, I gave it six episodes. Oh wow, you it you, never got better. Wow. Wow, that was, I, that I was deep. Like a, you yeah. and, you and the producer something. are the only ones who have seen that many episodes. Yeah, and by the way, the name of the metal is called a Netherium. Netherium. I looked it Netherium. up. I had to look it up. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. But psychosensitive is probably better. That's probably what's better. All right. <laughs> All right, we're going to go over to uh, honorable mentions. I love, love, love Son of Satan. I was so happy when I heard there was going to be a TV show, and I was so sad when I got to the sixth episode and I tapped. Satanish is in it. It should have been so good. It should have been. Uh, should have been. Should have been. Yeah. Could have been. It really could have been better. Mm. I'm sad now. <laughs> Mikey, what's your honorable mentions? Uh, for my honorable mentions, I'd go with Preacher by Garth Ennis. Uh, Why didn't I think of Preacher? That's a great one. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, the classic Walking Dead. I know the TV show kept on going and going and going. The uh, Same with the comic book, but eventually yeah. it ended, too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was it was good. I had read the comic book before I started watching the show. And... Uh, the show takes a lot of different turns that the comic book doesn't. So even if you are, if you're a fan of the TV show, you can totally read those comics. It's not going to mess you up. You'll be fine. It's true. I have, uh, I I can't remember the issue number where I finally just was like, no, Kirkman. (laughs) No, no. you got to stop. And I just put it down and I never picked it back up. I think if you look at the trades, it was around like volume six or seven. Can't remember how many issues those encompassed, but I was finally just like, dude, now nah, you got to stop. Yeah, but I, I did odd. enjoy it. Like, I think the first like three volumes were really good. Yeah. And uh, Hellboy, those short stories oh, of what? Hellboy uh, at the beginning were just phenomenal. And uh, I can't help but uh, say that if you haven't checked out any of the Tomb of Dracula from that was Marvel our Comics, drink. yeah. A friend of the podcast, Tony Isabella, wrote some, and I think he was the editor for Tomb of Dracula, too. Yeah. I know he wrote some. I don't know if he was the editor. So, yep, those are my honorable mentions. I'm sure I forgot a bunch. There's a couple of still good ones still left. Josh, you had a couple of good ones? 
I mean, well, on the screen, if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, the first run of Aliens vs. Predator, which came out like around 89 or 90, that eight, six or eight uh, issue series really showed me that things could peel off the big screen and into a comic book and still have me enjoy it a lot. So yeah. it was, I mean, that was really the first thing that really came off the screen for me to comics. And I was like, wow, this is fantastic. I really like reading this. And yeah, I think, all the dark horse, uh, aliens stuff was good. Like hive yeah, and all those stuff. Yeah. yeah I'm going to say, gonna say the, they it, yeah, they treated that property very well in the comics. It was very well. There's, there's, those Dark Horse Alien comics were better than some of the Alien movies. Yeah, they were better than most of the Alien movies after two. True. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I kind of like three. Yeah. Three had yeah. moments. It did. It really did. Yeah. And yeah. three but, borrowed from the comic books. Yeah. It did. It did. Uh, uh, let me just add one really stupid thing. The first movie to comic book that I thought was really good was the Romancing the Stone one. It was really good. <laughs> okay. I liked Romancing the Stone. Yeah, yeah the comic book really ago. held up. It was really a good, it was a good port. Oh, yeah, really they, just, they just remade it with uh, Sandra Bullock. What? Kind of, yeah. You're right. They did. They remade Romancing the Stone. No, they didn't remake Romancing the Stone. They remade a movie that's very much like it. What's they it called? Re- the, the Lost Citadel. Yeah, The Lost Citadel, yeah. Or something like it's that. It's real close, man. She's a writer who makes this whole thing. A romance and a super, writer. Yeah. And a, a super villain uh, thinks that she actually knows what this Lost Citadel might be. And she has no clue. And the cover model that's like Fabio uh, tries to save her. It's crazy weird stuff. Okay. But it looks fun. Right. Yeah. Looks good. Okay. Yeah. I'll see it. I'll see it. I love okay. seeing it. I'll see God it. damn it. I want Mobius to come out. They keep pushing it back. Now it's April first. I'm not. Uh, is it? I'm not a rush. Is it? I know. Rush. God damn it. I know. He was uh, one also, of the Midnight Suns. God. Sure. Also yes, on my was. list, and not, and this is not a comic, but it's sort of in the vein. Uh, if you get a chance, listen to the Sandman audiobook. The audio tell the teleplay is actually really good. Uh, if you're not a necessarily a comic reader, or you don't want to, you need something podcast you to listen in the car besides of course the long box guys go out and grab the uh, same man audiobook it's very well done and the last one for me i'm gonna i'm gonna throw in that same series of joe hill um comics uh my second favorite and that was plunge uh if you want to read another one that was uh pretty decent all right that brings us to you lt honorable mentions come on man don't take a zombie oh sure yeah uh, that was good. Uh, the Atlas Era Monsters uh, comic books were always pretty good. Um, you know, uh, Gideon Falls by... I uh, can't remember if, who, who that was by. If it was by Jeff Lemire, I think. Um, was pretty good. So, uh, other than that, a bunch of mine were already taken by other people. Yes, Josh. No, no, it's no he, was, he was brushing the teeth of the alien. Was brushing the alien teeth, yeah. Gideon uh, Falls is about the the priest, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a good series. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Uh, for me, there's a couple other honorable mentions I want to. Uh, uh, I want to say Vader down. A lot of people wouldn't consider that a horror comic, but there are some horror comic elements to it, and it could have been the greatest horror comic ever made if they had just leaned into it. Uh, but also, the, if you say Darth Vader three times in the mirror, he shows up and just murders everyone. Well, Darth Vader, Darth Vader. You're not looking in a mirror. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can see myself right there. <laughs> um, Our Lord uh, Vader and Savior. <laughs> um, what was the other one? Oh, uh, oh uh, what was the one where it was um, like S.H.I.E.L.D., but there were monsters? And Dum Dum Doom was a... Uh, uh, Howling. The howling, the howling commandos. commandos. That was a lot of fun for me. My favorite part of that was uh, the giant alien that they had as being the guy in this chair. So they're yeah. this huge giant alien uh, kaiju, but he was more suited to being the guy that sat back into the computer stuff in the background 
It's it's cool. IT. Go. Giant, yeah, giant aliens need IT guys too. Yeah, that was him. Star was, was like, I need a password reset. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I love the Holly Commandos. I, I wish it was a little bit better, a little bit more fun. There were some elements of it that I just didn't kind of like really draw me in. I, I read a, a ton of them, but um, and a ton of them, I mean, I like call what, 20 issues, 30 issues? Uh, like they, 10. Maybe ten. <laughs> I like. I, I kind of extrapolated it out. <laughs> I wish it was more, uh, but it was kind of fun for me. I really liked that aspect of the bring the horror comics, like Werewolf by Night, and all those guys were you know, fun to see as Commandos and Agents of Shield, and that was fun. Uh, I forgot Colin Bunn's uh, Harrow County. It's also oh. a collection. Uh, it's very good. And yeah. if you are a superhero fan and you want to try to dip your toes into horror, try the indestructible or excuse me, the immortal Hulk mm-hmm. series that's going on right now, because it's, it's taken Hulk into back to the horror elements that originally uh, was part of the storyline. Well, actually not originally, but, should have been part of the storyline. It's the Jekyll and Hyde story, right? Yeah, I mean, they put the horror been. back in. Yeah. They put the horror back into it, and poor Bruce Banner, he is definitely cursed. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to throw one out there that I did forget. Um, Lake of Fire by uh, Matt Smith and Nathan Fairbain. Uh, it's a horror uh, comic that takes place in the Viking era. It's uh, it's pretty cool. Oh, oh yeah, but, you, you talked about that before. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah, he's I forgot. Local. I forgot one other that I like. Uh, girls, you guys remember Girls? Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Surprised you didn't mention it by the Luna yeah. Brothers. Yeah, the Luna yeah. Brothers. That's okay. a terrific one. So uh, Girls is basically a uh, alien invasion, but all the aliens that are invading are these beautiful, beautiful women, and all they want to do is have sex. And the guys are like, "Well, it's an alien invasion, but I'm getting laid a lot." <laughs> and they only kill the women, and they replace the women by very subservient females who just want to have sex with me because they live off my semen. This is not the worst invasion ever. Until it's the worst invasion ever. <laughs> <laughs> my point that is, it's really a great well horror comic. <laughs> that was a fun one, yeah. I liked Girls. That was a good one. And so the reason that we were doing horror comics is to go with our theme from last week where we did our favorite horror movies, Mom Thulu. Jen from the Insmouth Rag uh, podcast who joined us. Uh, if you haven't gone over and subscribed to her podcast, go ahead and check it out. You can get it anywhere you get your podcast. That's the Insmouth Rag. Uh, it is a her ragging on horror movies. It's excellent. And we had some fan mail from Hi. our fan Kyle over in Hong Kong. Hi, Kyle. Uh, and Kyle was, uh, wanted to throw in his two cents about his favorite horror movies. He watches us on YouTube. So, uh, he said when he was younger, he jaws don't look now silence of the lamb and the Cronenberg's they come from within. Yeah. Uh, he also said Squirm and Grizzly. I think my parents were trying to Squirm. terrify my brother and I with films about aggressive animals. <laughs> I don't remember Squirm and Grizzly. Anybody remember that one? I remember uh, Oh, I remember yeah, Grizzly. Yeah, yeah. I remember Grizzly. Oh, yeah. Squirm was the worm one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought it was one word. I thought it was like one movie. That's Squirm and Grizzly. That's a funny cop movie. It's completely different. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Squirm was about the killer worms that ate people, and it was disgusting. And uh, Grizzly was the killer grizzly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, And then he also said Horror Express with Lee and Cushing is amazing. And uh, he really likes The Train to Busan. That's a a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. You guys seen that? Korean horror movie, yeah. 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 That's pretty much Walking Dead on a train. Yeah. So, thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Kyle. Let's go. If you guys want to write into us, there are a number of ways you can get a hold of us. You can go over 
to uh, patreon.com slash the long box guys and become a Patreon member for a mere $1 a month. You get an extra podcast that is available only to our Patreon subscribers called the geek leak, where we discuss all the non comic book related stuff that we are doing during the week. And all the money we earn from that goes to the Elizabeth Peabody house or to our friend Tom, who we'll talk about in a minute, uh, who's going to be rescuing, well, not rescuing, he's going to be assisting uh, refugees over in Poland. Uh, but before we get to that, if you do want to write to us, you can go there to Podbean, or excuse me, to Patreon, or you can hit us on Twitter, we're at the Long Box Guys, or you can write to us at luckybastards at the longboxguys.com. It's Lucky Bastard, Mike. It's just one of them. Oh, lucky, lucky Bastard, bastard. at the longboxguys.com. Thank you, LT. I appreciate that. If you're wondering, uh, uh, yes, we do have a YouTube channel. Go over and subscribe to it. Give us a higher rating because that drives other traffic to us. We'd appreciate it. And if you are watching us on YouTube and get a chance to subscribe to our podcast, go ahead and do that. It's the exact same thing without any, uh, with more editing, very little editing, but still some editing where we add music and such. And if you could give us a high rating over there too, that will also help push traffic to us. Um, But let's talk about, the guy who's doing well and doing good, Tom, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, so Thursday, I have a ticket. I'm uh, flying out to Poland. I'm meeting uh, some uh, people there that I've made contacts with. And uh, what we're going to be doing is uh, spending as much money as we collect to run supplies down to the border, pick up refugees, bring them to the interior, and keep doing that back and forth until we pass out. Uh, which border, Tom? <laughs> the Ukrainian border, LT. The Ukrainian Thank border. <laughs> We're not going and, to Busan. And this is also being underwritten by the Elizabeth Peabody House? Yes, the Elizabeth Peabody House was very nice, very, very generous. They gave us uh, $2,600 for the uh, the trip. Uh, we raised about another $5,000 altogether, so we have about $7,000, which equals out to about 23000 Zvalta. Did I say Zvalta. that right, Josh? Zvalta. 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 There you go. I keep saying the V for no reason. Zvalta, which is about um, enough to buy a small car. Uh, we don't have to buy a small car. What we have to do is buy as much supplies as we can and keep running them to the border and running people back. We're going to be handing people coming over the border, cash money uh, to get whatever they need because you never know what are, what someone in dire need needs. It's hard to just hand someone anything and know what they need. So we're going to be giving out, uh, just handing out money, uh, handing out, uh, we're also going to be buying supplies and bringing it down and, and doing our best to just, just help out the situation. All right. Well, thank you, Tom. Well, thank you, Mike. Um, it's not about me, of course. It's about the situation. And uh, if you want to contribute to the cause, please go to the Red Cross. That's a great charity. Uh, Catholic Charity Relief Fund is another great one. Say what you want about Catholic, the Catholic Church, but they get people out of countries like this very, very efficiently because they have a great network. They can bring refugees from church to church to church until they get into a safe zone. If there's one thing the Catholic Relief Charities do well is get refugees out of hotspots. They do it better than any other organization on the planet. That's a little bit of a tangent. (laughs) That is. And Josh, changes are your bit. What do you got for us, buddy? What do I have? I was trying to think of something, and then I was trying to look up. There's actually another uh, nonprofit that's pretty local to us, Sunflowers of Ukraine or Sunflowers. Yeah, that's another great one. Yeah, uh, they're doing good stuff. Um, yeah, I don't have anything this week. I submit. I don't, I don't. You're tapping out. Just, just tapping out. Yeah. I think I think Tom going to Ukraine is enough of, of a tangent, really. I think, I think that's it. Yeah. Um, well, once again, 
Uh, I, there's a great need over there. And in any way you can help out anybody over there, you know, do the best you can. I, I really think that this is one of those rare times where we can all get together and see that there's something bad happening that we can all try to stop. And uh, that's really all I have to say on the subject. I'm very drawn to go there to see what's going on and to help out as much as I can. LT, what do you get at the back of the long box? Uh, I have Star Trek The Next Generation Mirror Universe Collection. Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> I'm going to drink to that. That's a good one, LT. That's, That's a fucking that great series, had. too. IDW, right? IDW. So in this, it is all about uh, the Mirror Universe breaking into the Star Trek Next Generation Mirror uh, Star Trek Next Generation Universe and they try to keep doing these little missions to steal supplies because the evil empire is not doing so well. They're being besieged by the Klingons and uh, uh, the Kardashians and um, Did you say the and Kardashians? Or the Kardashians or whatever the hell they were. So they're the Kardashians, he's correct. Are they? Yes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, it is They're an evil empire. Very sure. plastic looking. Very plastic <laughs> looking. Great tits. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're getting invaded, but at least you know, great tits. And um, and so they keep they keep breaking into the normal Star Trek Next Generation universe, trying to steal supplies, trying to steal technology. Um, and uh, Reginald Barkley, the uh, the sort of weird engineer of the Star Trek Next Generation universe, is replaced for a while. And a bunch of the stories involve him, uh, his counterpart, thriving in the Next Generation universe because he's confident and sort of, you know, bloodthirsty. And he just kind of really shines in the next generation universe because he's not the quiet church mouse weirdo that the next generation character is <laughs> and and it's a it's a good series it's a pretty good series and uh ch you should check it out it's about 400 pages if you like uh next gen it's a it's a nice sort of continuation of that mythology that, that might be my favorite back of the long box one you've had. I love the, the goatees and the weird IDs and the pain generator and all that. Cra Give me your pain stimulator. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got an agonizer. No agonizer. Reason. Sorry, it's an agonizer. I forgot. <laughs> Loved all that. Mike, what do you got at the front of the long box? So week in and week out, I tell you about the amazing Ed Brubaker and Sean Phillips series. I have talked in ad nauseum about how you should be reading Criminal, how you should be reading Reckless. Today, I'm going to tell you about their horror comic, Fatal. If you are a fan of noir and a fan of Cthulhu, Fatal is the book for you. Didn't even know it existed until one time uh, I heard Felicia Day mention that she was obsessed with the series. And then I was like, oh, I got to read this. And she was correct. It is an amazing horror comic. And it it's full of suspense. It, the artwork, as always, is amazing. Ed Brubaker is just a master storyteller. That's a great one. I've... I, I, can't believe that didn't come up in our uh, our main list. I didn't because I was saving it. Saving it. <laughs> saving it. It's a good one. Yes. What, you got a 3D18, Tom? Uh, you know, I didn't uh, think of a 3D18 this week. I'm sorry about that, guys. Other things on my mind this week. It's fair. <laughs> totally fair. It's fair. To be fair. So I guess I, that's going to bring us over to plugs. Yeah, let's get some plugs. And we should totally thank Kirby Crackle for providing our geek rock music every week. You can check them out at kirbycracklemusic.com. And if you haven't gone over to Mom Thulu's podcast, which uh, I've mentioned already, the Insmith Rag, go ahead and check that out. And uh, check out Seth and the Boys over at who's next gaming.com uh, for their podcast on 
comics, movies, video sex. games, sex robots. Not so much as sex robots, but I'm sure they're going to talk about Oculus soon. <laughs> sex <laughs> robots are getting better and better. Watch uh, Whitney Cummings' latest um, stand-up performance. She actually brings one on stage with her, and uh, they have a little communicado. It's actually pretty funny. It's a sex robot of her. I should mention that. A little creepy. Yeah. She leaves it with her husband when she goes on trips. <laughs> It's fair. Huh. It's fair. Um, I just remember one more comic I wanted to mention, which was Punch and Judy. Alan Moore. Horror comic. Okay. Anybody read it? Besides me? No. Uh, it was really good. It was a take on the Punch and Judy um, you know, okay. universe, but it was as a horror comic, as an abusive husband and a wife, and it was it was pretty good. Sorry. Was it a rape? It was Alan Moore, buddy. <laughs> So the answer is it was it was implied. Uh, Josh, anyone do uh, plug? Uh, yeah, great stories, comics, and games right here in Bond, down by my house. They still don't have a sign. Damn it! I was gonna ask you if they had a sign. <laughs> Those sons of bitches! They're like, God damn, we still don't have a sign. I found uh, it. So they're somewhere between I don't know the recycling center and CVS or something. I don't I don't remember. And a Chinese restaurant, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's somewhere in the, it's just uh, in a strip mall in my in Northbridge, Massachusetts. Go check those guys out. They're uh trying to make uh make good on that space. So good luck to them. How about you, LG? What do you get to plug? I'd like to plug geekorthodox.com. 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 Hello, Tammy. Geekorthodox.com, purveyor of fine stained glass prints. Uh, Johnny Skywalker rocks glasses and other geeky things. And also check out ianlino.com for t-shirts, baseball uh, shirts, and uh, other fine apparel. I'm going to use my sexy pirate voice that Josh has dubbed as my sexy pirate voice to plug our Twitter page. You can go to the long box guys backslash maybe forward slash I don't know. That's not how Twitter works at all. It's at the long box guys. At the long box guys. I've had a couple of sketches. I don't care. Use my sultry pirate voice to tell you to go see there. And uh, you'll see some of the stuff that we've been talking about, including Barry Horowitz's uh, being uh, elbow dropped through a table and a couple of things over the week. And uh, we have a good time over there. So drop by, drop us a line, say hi. And Tom, where can people get updates on your trip? Um, I'm really. Yeah, it's unplugged. Yeah, it's unplugged. It, yeah. It'll get unplugged after the it's second time. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not really putting that out too much except on my Facebook page. So you can go to Thomas Strange on the on no, Facebook. No, no, just, just go ahead and listen to yeah. next week and we will give you an That's update. That's what I'm saying to you. I, I don't want to have everyone try to go I'm over there. trying to get you to plug our podcast, but you son of a bitch wouldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I'll be talking about it next week when I come back alive and well and healthy and uh, from um, from the Ukrainian border. And uh, yeah, we'll be talking about that next week. Yeah. Yeah. Hope, yeah. Hopefully, next week, talk hopefully. <laughs> next week because you're not going to be around uh, for the podcast. We're going to do Jack of Hearts. I'll be around. I'll be back by Monday night. Sweet, sweet. Oh man, I do Jack of Hearts next week. <laughs> Jack of Hearts. <laughs> I'm going to come off the ultimate high to the ultimate low. Fuck. <laughs> and I guess that Stop brings in your us... heart. Oh, I hate that guy so much. Him and Nova, the two only two characters. Are. Mike, what's this podcast like to you? It's like drunk history, but for comics. Josh, the Ukraine is that your sector? Uh, I'm the man in the chair for Ukraine. If that's my sector, that's goddamn uh, right. That's you what are. I gotta do. <laughs> and I'm gonna be calling you constantly, going, "I am so fucking lost." What does it mean when everyone's speaking Russian, pointing guns at me? LT. <laughs> Any last words for us? Uh, good luck, Tom. Uh, we love you. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm not going to say bye bye. I'm going to say good day. And don't forget what I always say don't diss what you hate, just promote what you love. You live longer. Hopefully. <clears throat> so long for the long box, guys. Bye bye. Bye bye.
Bye-bye. You said bye-bye. Bye-bye. You said bye-bye. <laughs> bye-bye. Uh, 